Scoring is the most common way for cyclists to get injured in New York City. I see it all the time, and there are ways that you can act to prevent it. I want to talk a little bit about what the laws are against dooring, how to avoid dooring as a practical matter, and then I'd like to share a few stories about crazy testimony that drivers gave after dooring cyclists about why it wasn't their fault. Um, let's start with the law. Only densely populated places have laws against dooring. So New York City and New York State both have rules worded slightly differently that prohibit someone from unsafely opening up the door of a vehicle into the side of the vehicle available to traffic or into the traveled area of the road. Those are the two different phrases used. And um, in contrast, New Jersey has no anti-dooring law. You can, in fact, take action against a driver who doors you in New Jersey based on just the idea common sense tells you that, you know, you shouldn't be opening the door into traffic. But um, in New York, we actually affirmatively prohibit it um, as a matter of state and city law. It's unfortunate, but the police don't really understand that. So despite efforts we've made to win enactment of laws against violating the right of way of a cyclist, I have never once seen a police officer use that principle and that analytic framework for writing up a summons against a motorist who opens a door up of the vehicle, even if it's right into a bike path. I mean, you think there's nothing more elementary in terms of violating someone's right of way than if they're in their dedicated bike lane, their dedicated right of way, and a motorist just opens up the door into them. Um, of course that's a violation of their right of way, but the police don't understand it that way. There's also a little curly cue on the law that's a little frustrating that has to do with hit and runs. You can actually door and run, and it's not per se illegal, because the rule against leaving the scene of a collision has to do with leaving the scene of a collision where the vehicle, um, where operation of the vehicle caused injury. But dooring is considered use of a vehicle. So if you use a vehicle to door someone and you injure them or even kill them, which has happened, unfortunately, um, you can leave the scene. It's a loophole that we've been working with our friends at the state legislature to try to close because dooring and running is probably the most chilling kind of hit and run there ever is. There's no way the door doesn't know that they hit someone. So often in a hit and run, the driver says, oh, I didn't know I hit someone because they stayed in the cab, they didn't slow down. When a door hits someone, maybe knocks them into the path of another oncoming vehicle that finishes them off, they have left the scene and we've seen that happen in a number of cases and they're not liable for hit and run. But first let's go down this street and see how you can avoid getting door. The best thing you can do is just stay out of the door zone. On a nice quiet street like this, it's very easy. Take the lane. Stay out of the door zone. It's approximately three to four feet from the side of the car and, you know, the door can open and you're not going to be hit. There are times, however, uh, in particular when there's cars in the vehicular lane queued up waiting to go through the intersection, that you might want to filter up to the front, right? So there's a space in between the parked cars and the vehicular lane. Um, and in that situation, what you can do is ring your bell as you go through the door zone. You can look inside the vehicle and see if there's people waiting to get out. Um, and you can take various steps to try to make your presence known so that you don't get hurt. Um, that's probably the best way to go about it. Um, now, what have I heard from drivers who've doored people? The craziest stories. A lot of times drivers will say, oh, I was cleaning my car and I had the door open for like 10 minutes and then the cyclist just came along and rammed into it. Who would do that? What cyclist is that clueless that they just ram into an open door that wasn't in motion that opened right into their path? I've never heard of that ever happening, and the cyclist who did that wouldn't come to me, a lawyer, to tell me about how they did that. They'd just say, this is on me, right? Um, a little bit more fantastical, I've heard a driver say, oh, um, the door was open just a crack, and I was inside, I was trying to get some air in the car, and then a huge gust of wind came and blew the door open into the cyclist without me touching it. That was a good one. Um, What's another one that I've heard? It's that um, the, the cyclist wasn't even in the roadway. The cyclist was on the sidewalk and the person who opened the door 
from the car at, to exit on the sidewalk side, um, you know, they doored the cyclists while they were on the sidewalk, which would not, of course, be an illegal dooring because it's not into the space available for bike traffic or on the traveled side of the roadway. Um, of course, in the case that, that comes to mind most readily where that explanation was given by the driver, the cyclist happened to be wearing a helmet mounted camera that showed that he was in the street exactly where he was supposed to be. And this crazy story about the cyclist getting doored on the sidewalk was just that. So, um, you know, people will tell stories after a traffic interaction gone wrong, otherwise known as a crash. But, um, you know, the fact is, in this crowded city, you have to be ready for doors to open on vehicles. And the best way to do it is to make your presence known. Make sure that if you're going to head up past a queue of stopped vehicles, that you are gonna make it to the red light before they start moving. Otherwise, you have a risk of getting sideswiped as the line of stopped vehicles starts moving again and going under the wheels of one of those moving vehicles. And, um, you know, of course, you wanna look for dooring from the vehicular lane as well, because nowadays with e-hail, um, there's very little interaction between the driver and the passenger. Back in the day, drivers used to take some role in warning their passengers when it was safe or not to exit the vehicle. Um, but that's not the case anymore. People now just hop in the car, they give their name, and they don't expect to have any other interaction with the driver. I mean, some people talk to the driver, which is great, but other people have zero interaction with the driver. And when it's time to get out, they don't feel the need to say to the driver, okay, I'm getting out here. Maybe they say there's a lot of traffic. I'm just gonna walk the rest of the way. You know, those sorts of interactions create an opportunity for the driver to warn that passenger, hey, this is New York City. There's lots of cyclists. We happen to be next to a bike lane. I see a bicyclist coming in my rear view mirror. Passenger, please don't get out now. Instead, passenger just pop right out of the car. So, you know, you need to be aware of passengers popping out from the traffic lane as well as in the parking lane. You need to make noise and make sure that people are aware that you're there on the street. And, you know, that's the best way to avoid getting hurt being doored.